Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am not here with Geeky Sparkle, so you can just shut the video off right now. Uh, no, we're going to talk about the comic book industry this morning and a lot of chatter about how successful uh, DC Comics has been. Uh, that Superman is selling very, very well because of the controversy about the son of Superman being bisexual and uh, having having a, a boyfriend that's impervious to his super shenanigans. Uh, I have to wonder why they did that. You know, just imagine, you know, all the jokes about Lois Lane and Superman. Yeah, that's probably why they did that. Uh, you have drama about the the colorist quitting uh, working on, on uh, the Superman titles because he didn't like the fact that uh, they got rid of truth, justice, and the American way. But despite this, the... The book is reportedly selling very well. It depends on who you ask. And, and also, Batman's fine, too. Everything's fine. Everything's fine here in comics. And I'm, I'm questioning this. I'm wondering what's actually going on. Because we keep hearing, you know, all these stories of how fantastic and phenomenal the mainstream comic book industry is. The direct market. Again, not talking about manga. Uh, not talking about uh, you know graphic novel sales or, or any of that. And I know for a fact that several comic shops have stopped selling new comics altogether. Uh, several comic shops went out during the pandemic. Uh, DC Comics is using a different distributor now. Some, some retailers have stopped DC altogether and Marvel books are getting damaged by Penguin Random House. The reporting is all over the place now because we have so many different distributors. It used to be pretty easy to tell what the sales figures of comics were because you just look at, uh, you know, what well, at least what Diamond was selling to retailers. And now it's all over the place. Now it almost feels like you have to take the company's word for it that things are great. Things are fantastic, and I, I don't know if they're great and fantastic, or if this is just a a bump, uh, you know, kind of the last last uh, gasp before the end. Um, I know that um, you know if if you're familiar with the death process, and this is very morbid. I know this is very morbid, but if you're familiar with the process of dying and how people generally die. If they die of natural causes, you know, I'm not talking accidents or, or any unforeseen, you know, circumstances, but if their body begins to shut down. You will often hear from hospice nurses that there is uh, one last push, like uh, someone who's been sleeping a lot, you know, maybe an elderly person. This happened with my grandfather. You know, he'd been sleeping a lot, sleeping for weeks, uh, and all of a sudden he he woke up one day and uh, he was very chatty, he was very, you know, cognizant of everything going on. And it seemed like, well, geez, maybe it's a miracle. Maybe he's getting better. And unfortunately, he died about a week later. Uh, and I have to wonder if this isn't kind of what's going on with the direct market right now, because there is a lot of flux. And I don't think a lot of these changes are for the better. I don't think Diamond's going to be around that much longer. But we're seeing, you know, reports of sales being very good to a smaller number of comic book shops. So again, I'm trying to trying to figure out what's going on here. I'm not saying that they're not great. Uh, sales aren't good, that things aren't fine. But why do we have so many DC Comics creatives suddenly leave? Like everybody started jumping ship. Did you notice that? If it wasn't Substack, it was they were jumping to Amazon or they were jumping to crowdfunding. If things were so fantastic and the future looked uh, so fantastic for these creatives, why did they all jump ship for Substack, which is, you know, just venture capital is kind of dodgy. It's because I think internally there's more going on. Now, uh, I am hearing from another source. I know Ethan Van Skyver has been saying for a year or two now that he thinks uh, DC will wind down publishing new material. Uh, I have heard from another source not you know related to, to Van Skyver in any way that DC was kicking around the idea of just pulling the plug on monthly titles altogether. Again, can't verify for hundred percent. It is a rumor, but uh, you know, I, I have to wonder because it seems like it's a pain in the ass for them to use Lunar, uh, whatever they're doing right now, uh, you know, selling comics to a, a shrinking number of comic shops. Meanwhile, they could just put out trades, um, and again, a lot of comic shops 
you know, I know are, are, uh, you know, ditching new issues altogether. So it's weird to see all of these stories come out about how, how fantastic the comic book industry is, unless this is all smoke and mirrors. Hey, Discovery. Hey, when we merge, yeah, we're doing great. Things are fine. Things are great here. Look at these. Wow, we're doing great. People love Batman. People love bisexual Superman. Freaking love it. Love it. Uh, we're going we're gonna to make more of this. So let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 238,000 subs. We do talk about the comic book industry. Uh, try to talk about the business side of things. We do publish comics ourselves. We're going to be ramping up publications uh, next year. If you go to shopclownfish.com, you can check out uh, the reprint of Shadowbinders. That was our, our webcomic from about 10 years ago. And uh, we have a ton of new material in the pipeline. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to talk about that soon. But Anyway, yeah, everybody crowing about the sales of bisexual Superman. And I'm sure it will sell well. This happened you know, in the 90s when they would kill off characters. Be like, Superman's dead. It's the last time you're ever going to see Superman. Buy the comic. Quick, quick, quick. Buy five, five issues of it. Uh, so there probably are a lot of speculators out there picking up copies of, you know, oh my God, the first gay Superman. Uh, Got to do that. But uh, Screen Rant talking about the numbers being big, and then we're gonna we're gonna talk about bounding in the comics. He says no, the numbers aren't good. But you go out to DC Comics sales, and it's pretty much everything's fantastic. Everything's fantastic. Diamond says everything's fantastic. Now Todd McFarlane supposedly selling the shit out of Spawn books, um, but uh, you know a lot of these people are are. Look at this. Comics had their biggest year in 2020 despite the pandemic. This doesn't make sense, guys. This does not make sense. This does not compute. Comic shops were closed for several months in 2020. Diamond was down. Uh, I, I mean, I, I get if you're rolling manga into it and you're rolling digital comics into it, but there definitely seems to be uh, a push to prove that the comics aren't actually in trouble, that the direct market is not actually in trouble. What's this headline? IDW celebrates Lock and Key Season 2 premiere on Netflix company, also makes significant progress with robust publishing lineup, expands distribution agreement with Penguin Random House, and bolsters editorial team. Things are fine. We've been losing millions of dollars every year for like the last three or four years now, but things are fine. We have a Netflix deal now. Lock and Key is going to be the next uh, Stranger Things. It's going to be the next Squid Game. Okay, so let's let's go to the screen rant that definitely is, uh, you know, like, hey, guys, things are fine. Uh, after revealing that the new Superman John Kent is by DC Comics reports that Superman Son of Kal-El 5 has sold more copies than its debut. Okay, the publisher has not released any specific numbers of orders for Superman Son of Kal-El number five. However, it truly would be unprecedented for the fifth issue in a series to outperform sales of the series initial uh, inaugural issue. Well, yeah, if it's a big deal, you made a big deal about like people are like, what? Superman's buy? Oh, I'm going to buy five of those. Or I'm going to buy it for the morbid curiosity of it. It's commonly known the typical trend for a comic series is that their sales hit a peak at the release of a series debut issue and gradually decline in sales as the series continues. That's a recent development. By recent, I mean the last like 20, 20 some years. It used to be that, you know, you would have an ebb and flow of sales. If that's the case, then why is why is Spawn uh, doing better now than it has in years? Uh, I don't know. I'm just saying that. So that's not obviously not the case. But they won't release specific numbers. So a small but very vocal contingent of people criticized John Kent's coming out, believing the move was an example of comics being too woke. The unparalleled jump in sales for the upcoming issue clearly shows that efforts to increase inclusivity in comics is being incredibly well received by the DC Comics community. Or they're just buying it because they think it's going to be worth money. Because this is the, the, you know, the big event, right? People buy event comics. This is some serious damage control here. Um, you know, and look, you want to talk about being woke. Yeah, DC Comics no longer publishes action comics. They publish activism comics, right? I mean, look at this. Like, not only is he bisexual, 
not only does he have a hacktivist boyfriend, but now he's he's striking for climate change. Uh, this isn't the only thing going on. You know, we have uh, transgender Amazons coming into Wonder Woman. Now, Grant, this is a new character, but still, you know, uh, this is at the same time all this stuff is going on. You know, trans Amazons are a thing now. Uh, we've got uh, I am not Starfire, which is Starfire's goth lesbian daughter. One of the most disliked trailers I've ever seen on YouTube. Uh, massive, massive amount of dislikes. But yeah, uh, tell me how people are loving it. They're loving it. Now, I think, and this is just speculation on my part, but I think a lot of this can be traced back to the general manager of DC Comics, who is Daniel Cherry. Uh, Daniel Cherry the Third, who came from, I think, Blizzard? He came from Blizzard Activision? Yeah, he was the chief marketing officer of Activision Blizzard's esports division. Uh, he worked in you know marketing for a while. But yeah, he's, he's an activist. Um, he said, this is what he said on LinkedIn. He said, uh, while always respecting the past, I think it's our responsibility to leverage the cultural power of DC Comics and our global characters, our characters to entertain and inspire an increasingly diverse global fan base. That could be part of the reason why we got rid of uh, truth, justice in the American way, because, you know, we got to have truth, justice and a better tomorrow for everybody willing to buy DC Comics. Comics have the unique power to create resonant imagery and narratives that can move the world toward a better, more inclusive version of itself. This, again, goes with truth, justice and a better tomorrow. On Twitter, Cherry happened to name drop Green Lantern John Stewart, where he also describes himself as a social activist. Um, yeah, I mean, this is this should not surprise anyone. This was uh, last fall, coming from Cosmic Book News. Then now we're starting to see it because I think there was already material in the pipeline. But now we're seeing it. And we're seeing it like all at once that uh, you know DC Comics is all about activism. So if you've got activist journalists like-minded journalists who want to push a narrative that people freaking love paying for activism in their entertainment, then they're of course going to, you know, make sure that, uh, you know, the story is, well, even though we don't know the actual sales numbers, this is clearly a win. This is clearly a win. And also people aren't tired of Batman yet. Uh, they're not, um, comics fans love to declare DC comics, excessive focus on Batman, uh, is causing interest in the character to decline. Comic sales don't support the idea of so-called Batman fatigue. Well, I know Batman sells pretty well. How well is Batman going to sell when, like, everybody jumps ship, though? All the top creators. Again, if things are fine, if things are really fine, wouldn't you stay at DC Comics and make more money? Because you're probably going to make more money there than Substack's thrown at you, right? It's just weird. The whole thing is weird. Uh, a lot of damage control going on. Um, you know, of course, we had uh, the colorist of Superman uh, jump and ship because he didn't like that they were dissing America. Uh, didn't like that. Now, coming from Bounding in the Comics, again, you know, Screen Rant's not giving us the actual sales data. Um, but apparently it's not going to take much because they said that um, they don't actually reveal any data on what these unprecedented orders are. So if you go to Comicron... Son of Kal-El number one only did 68,000 issues. That was good for the 17th best-selling comic of the month. However, given DC Comics stopped distributing their books with Diamond in favor of Lunar, the numbers from Comicron for DC Comics are rough estimates. Comicron, Comicron explains DC projections are from an initial order data set and thus handicapped amid Diamond's entries. Needless to say, beating sales for the first Issue should not be that hard for a Superman book. In fact, selling less than 70,000 copies for Superman is absolutely abysmal. Yes, it is. Uh, when the new series was rebooted uh, back in 2018, it sold 133,000 copies. So it's always, always does over 100,000 copies, um, you know, historically. So it could have sold 69,000 copies, and that's a win. So... <laughs> Maybe DC Comics was referring to how poorly the book sales were uh, doing when they claimed it had unprecedented orders because the estimates from Comicron for Superman, Son of Kal-El, number one, are clearly unprecedentedly bad for a new Superman book. Yeah, 
If you look a little further into the Comicron estimates for Superman, Son of Kal-El, it gets even uglier. The second issue, which came out in August, only so sold 40,000 copies. It was the 56th best-selling comic of the month. Comicron has not released their sales estimates for September yet, but given the book had over a 41% decline from the first issue to the second, it's possible sales for the third issue could be below 30,000. See, this is the thing. With the big shakeup in comics, with distribution, it's very easy to lie. Like, we don't, we don't know what the actual numbers are. We don't have sell-through data. Now, I remember a couple of years ago that there were supposed to be point-of-sale uh, numbers being tracked through Nielsen's or through uh, BookScan. I think BookScan was going to do it. And that disappeared down the, the rabbit hole. BookScan's not tracking individual direct market comic book sales anymore. So you pretty much have to take the publisher's word on it, uh, take Lunar's word for it. You know, again, just all the way around, it, this whole thing stinks to high heaven because I know for a fact several comic shops have stopped carrying new books. I know some have stopped carrying DC in particular, but they're going to brag about how phenomenal the sales are. Something is up. Um, but that being said, yeah, you're going to have journos pounce on this and be like, look, comics are fine. Not only are comics fine, people love the direction that DC Comics is going in. Yay, activism. Good luck with that. Because I, I think, you know, even if there's an, an initial bump because of the shock of all the, the changes that DC Comics is making to these characters, I don't think it's going to last. I think people are going to buy these books either to get a good laugh or roast them or whatever, or they've gotten a lot of media attention, you know, but after that initial bump, just like the, you know, the, uh, the trick of killing off characters in the nineties, they're going to have to revert things to the status quo. If they want to you know, bring people back or retain readers, it might be too late. Again, this discovery merger is coming. It's coming like a freaking freight train. And uh, I don't think DC is going to have that layer of protection because as I understand it, Jason Kalar is kind of protecting DC Comics. And he's not going to be there after the middle of next year. So if Discovery doesn't give a shit about comics, who knows what's going to happen? But I think there's definitely some damage control being done. This feels like they're trying to justify all of these decisions. And at the end of the day, money talks. And if the money is not there, it's not there. You know, it's game over. So we're going to watch this. Uh, in the meantime, there is a ton of other comics that you can read especially manga, graphic novels, independent comics. Um, you know, if you don't like the direction that DC Comics is going in, just read something else. Give your money to other publishers. You know, they'll, they'll happily take your money um, for sure. So I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later.